702. Roll call. Ed Marcus. Gary Chu. Sean Harley. Randy Sneed. Erica Perton. Derek Jones. Nathan Mullaney. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes from 215.23. I move to accept the minutes. Okay. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes from 215.23. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Citizens' input. You hear about the mowing contract. Correct. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go old business. I'll I'll start there. I'll start with that mowing contract. I know that we had one bid. I think that bid. Um, well, I know that bid. I left it here. It's right there. There we go. So and let me take a look at that again. Uh, but there was only one bid from Premier Turf Solutions, uh, Mr. Albert Hanselman. Um, he had a bid for twenty-two thousand dollars to take care of the cemetery mowing. Uh, project from April 15 to November 1 of this year, and that's the bid that we have for your consideration. That's a one and only. I make a motion that we accept the bid from Albert Hanselman to provide the cemetery mowing for the year 2022. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second to accept the bid from. Premier Turf Solutions for the amount of $22,000. Uh, any further comments on any of that? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both? You got it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, You're welcome. Thank you for Hopefully the work you're pleased last year and you'll be again this year. Yeah, I didn't tell about that. That's the same. Tell You want me to say this? No. Um, I mean, I can bring that up or talk about it. Okay. Okay. But I know that, just counsel, so that you're aware, I know that um, we went through this process. Albert submitted this bid. Um, he's obviously the successful bidder. And I've got a contract here for you, Albert. But I know that after this process had kind of been started, he expressed a desire to uh, have a contract for a longer term, three years. Um, that really put us under a time crunch in terms of advertising things, getting it back out, and we weren't certain as to who might necessarily bid or not bid. We knew that probably Albert would bid because he expressed that desire. Um, but it is something to consider for the years to follow. Um, if we're happy and satisfied with the job that he's doing, you may want to consider making that a longer term. Um, so that you don't have to do this from uh, year to year and it gives a little more security uh, to, to Albert, uh, to having that position, if he's doing a good job. But it was kind of late in the game to mess around with having to advertise, get that in, get that accepted, and get that going by April 15th. Okay, so Albert, did you help us last year finish up out there? Correct. Yep, I did the entire season. Yeah. He did a great job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had talked to Derek about maybe doing this one for three years rather than one after the fact that we bid it out and we just couldn't get it done before April 15th, so. No, that's not a problem. Year. I just, you well, know, and what I, what I told Lisa, so you all know, is that I would freeze my price. So the security part of that, and I did that with the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I did that, gas went to $5 a gallon from two fifty. <laughs> so, but that was on me. And um, the idea was that you'd have security. Lisa yeah. planned her budget exactly what the cost is gonna be instead yeah. of and since you're getting fewer and fewer bids all the time, you would have the security of knowing, okay, this is taken care of over the next few years. Yeah. That was that was my suggestion to her. And then, um, if you don't want to do that or anything, you're not going to offend me. It was just an idea of then. Well, you know, I think next year we will. It's okay. just that we did we ran out of time yeah, this year. So. And had we known before we yeah. got this far down the process, I would not have been opposed to that. And I thought I was going to see you before so, tonight, so yeah. I was going to. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. It was just something reassuring I to you. I would. Going to next year, I would have no problem with that. Yeah. 
So we'll play this game again next year. Okay. Um, and it may well be something that we advertise for a, a longer period of time, maybe three years. Um, obviously, you need to submit a bid, sure. and we have to consider all the bids, and it's not just necessarily the lowest bid, but it's the lowest responsive yeah. and bid that we are comfortable with. So that being said, I do have, this is the, it's a contract, it's the specifications, it's the same thing that was printed in the paper, but this is something I'm going to let you have that. Okay. Um, take a look at it, but it'll need to be signed and back to uh, the council here. Whenever you're comfortable. But Very other similar last year. It's the same thing as published. Yeah. Yeah. We left the zero off, it's 2200. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get that back fertilizing some. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that was a typo. That's fine. That's this one? It is that one. I'm not going to say that one. Guys, the other thing I had to talk about, and you tell me if you want to talk about somewhere else, but there was a, there was a grant contract. It's with... Priority Project Resources, Inc. It's that Shannon, help me with her last name? McLeod. McLeod. Um, I got that this week. I took a look at that. I didn't see anything. <coughs> I didn't see anything that was out of the ordinary. We've dealt with her before. I will say it's a total price of $58,000. Some of that money has already been paid just because she's already done some work on this uh, matter. If anybody has any questions about that, they're welcome to ask. I do know that the contract talks about that we can terminate this uh, contract with any uh, point in time within 30 days written notice, and then it's kind of a pro rata situation if we would decide to do that, and I think the town's been happy with what she's provided for us, and obviously the town just was a to a very substantial grant, so we're good for Shannon. So I'm just letting you know that I've, I've looked at over, I have reviewed that, I didn't see any red flags, I didn't see anything concerning. And that's what I found. Okay. So we have to go with that ring and sign it? Because there's only a ring signature. Right. It, it is. It's probably best to have a council vote uh, yeah. to say that yes, we would accept that service agreement, or no, you don't, or you want to counter, or whatever you want to do. I'll move to accept the agreement from Priority Project Resources Incorporated for the Water Utility Improvement Project Grant Administration. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the grant from Priority Project Resources. Priority Project Resources Incorporated for the amount of $55,000, I believe it is. So we have any further comments on that? It's $50,000, i am sorry. I said 58000 That's 58000 Fifty. Okay, five and three. Okay, I see it. The labor standards and environment review. So fifty-eight thousand dollars. Any further comments on that? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, that's signed. And that is all I had to report. Motion to accept the attorney report. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept attorney report. Mm -hmm. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on. Uh, salary ordinance 2023-01. And this was passed at the last meeting on the first reading. So the front page has been fixed. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, it's actually, it would be up this evening, it would be up for a second and third reading. Right. If it's, there's a motion to pass it, it would be a motion to pass it on the second and third readings. Um, unless somebody has some kind of amendment, so they want to do something different. But that's, those are kind of the options. I would move to pass it on the second and third reading. I will second that. We have a motion and a second to pass the salary ordinance 2023 01 on the second and third reading. Any further comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, that one passed. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lisa. And I got Jerry to sign it, so if everyone has signed on it, off on it. Uh, any other old old business? I've got another resolution here. It's not on the. There's a resolution. It's really kind of under the park board opening. I would well, think this one is okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes. it is. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought I fixed this. But it's resolution 202303. Oh, well, the paperwork says 02. What? Oh. Okay. The downtown parking is 03. Okay. 02. Well, wait, 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 wait. We got an ordinance versus a resolution. So. Yeah. Okay, so the resolution. The resolution is O two. Yeah, that's. Me. Yeah, the resolution is O two. Yeah. That's that's and the part. And the other one is O three. Sorry. Yeah, because right. it's an ordinance. It's right. not the yeah. resolution. It's O two. I just forgot to write. So I don't have the paperwork for the downtown parking. Nope. I'll go print it out after we're done. So what we want to do? Well, I got it right here if you want to read it quick. Well, I think I've got it too. Uh, well, Derek's got a copy right here. So we all I, I yeah. do. It's in here. Oh, okay. I put it in your packets. I just forgot to print it. But right now we're on the resolution. Well. And to be honest, it's under the park board opening on the agenda. Right. Okay. So with that, with that item on the agenda, there is a resolution. And that's resolution 2023-2. Yeah. And it is a waiver of those political party requirements. And I can I can explain that, talk about that if you'd like. Well, do we have any other old business though other than that? And that may be the first thing to take care of and knock out before we move on to new business on the agenda. Yeah. There you go. Oh, <laughs> he was looking at me. We can go ahead and take care of the resolution. Well, do you have any other old business? Yeah, any other old business? Do you have any yeah. No, there's not, according to, my, to the agenda, there's nothing on there. That's the question you have to ask. Oh, okay. Is there any other old business? Do we have any other old business? Okay. okay. I thought we did. All right. So now we're going to move on to new business. Park board opening. There we go. Resolution 2023-02 waiver. Okay. And let me give you a little introduction about what we got going on here. But at the last meeting, there was a desire to appoint Damon Finkley to the... Uh, the park board that is a town council appointment but i do know and i my notes are pretty lacking but i do know that there was an issue with his political party requirements and so there is a provision in indiana code that allows us to do a waiver that's best accomplished through this resolution that says we're waiving those political party requirements and that we want to have damon pinkley appointed to the park board so that's what this resolution would accomplish and that would effectively allow you to appoint him uh, on the park board, and regardless of political party affiliation. I move to approve resolution number 202302. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 202302, the waiver of political party. Any further comments? I have a question for Terry. Um, on that waiver. Is there any requirement down the road that if somebody of the other political party seeks that position that we have to honor that or this, this waiver is all seeking you don't have to we totally ignore that clause from here on out or it's just only this position. For the appointment of Damon Bentley, that's it. Yeah. So it's all so one by one basis. Yes, yeah, so next time somebody would come before the council and say, I would like to be appointed to the park board, we have to consider that again. Could we do another waiver? Yes we could. Um, do you have to? No, you don't. But it's something you have to consider on a on candidate by candidate basis. Sure. Okay. Thank you. I have a come, uh, question too. Uh, since I wasn't here the last meeting, last time we had three or four people that were seeking seeking that that spot. Is that 
my memory serves me correctly? Sounds about so right. How did we come down to just David? This came with the recommendation from the park board. Right. The park board recommendation and then uh, just taking into consideration the other the other ones that applied David was we felt David was <coughs> There were no Democrats, by the way, that, that from my understanding, that had applied. I, no. Just knowing who the other parties are, let's put it that way. <laughs> it's hard to find a Democrat this time. Well, I mean, <laughs> so got the only two. two. <laughs> did, did you say good ones? Well, <laughs> oh, I'm an arm down there. I just asked. Give me your pen. I'm going to take this pen, hang on. Oh, it's recording. Well, give me your phone. <laughs> okay. So all in favor of, of, of this say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Sean, I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay, we have ordinance 2023-3. This is a ordinance of the Argus uh, amending section 72.04 of the code of ordinances this is a parking uh, code so you guys ended on your agenda to meet in a workshop and stuff like that but um, you also asked me to kind of look into what it would take to to change that so I I brought forward the old ordinance and Derek and I kind of took into consideration what um, Jill Julian had said when she was in here, what Log House has stated in the past about parking, and you can look it over. You don't have to pass it tonight. You can table it, and you can have a discussion on it, or you can, but we can't keep changing it. These street signs are 50 to $70 a piece. Well, and, and I'm, before we even, I guess, go to that point, I guess, um, and maybe we should table it, but um, my question is, are we, first of all, are we doing this and then, again, have no enforcement of it going on? Are we just doing it to keep it on the books? Are we doing, I mean, when was the last time parking tickets were written between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m. for being there longer than two hours, I guess? It's, I mean, are we continuing to to fill the books with ordinances that we're not enforcing, or, I mean, what are we doing? Before we just kind of, before we suspended it from construction downtown, um, the override officer had written several tickets and knocked on several doors about the parking there that wasn't supposed to be. So yes, there was tickets written on the old policy, Ned. Um, I could bring those, I don't have those with me, but they are, they are in prior to years report that the police chief sends down to us um, and he also had gave us an update back then that they had wrote tickets is what kind of brought the scenario up to go up and put because we didn't realize how infringing that the construction was and that it might be suspended because they were writing tickets <coughs> and we were catching up for that and so so is this how it was read this is how it read before? this is actually probably better than it was before because Mrs. Huyu was in and had complaints about it, and I, I get it. My only concern with this is that it has Jamie looked at it to see if those times would be okay to clear the snow without having yeah. vehicles up there. That, yeah. That's my only concern. Well, that's, well, that was one of the things we discussed because that wasn't in there originally, and we put in there, we have to have a window where there's no cars up there. So yes. that, that's why we did that. I agree 100%. Right. That's what I want to make sure that we yeah. have that window built into this policy before we pass it. So that yeah. 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. is a big enough window? Well, yeah, if there's no cars up there, we can do it pretty quick. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, we did six originally, and then we had the log house complaining because they opened at five. Because normally I'll pull somebody in at five to do it, and we're out of there by six or seven. But I'm, I'll have to pull guys in earlier. So, but it's not like it's we get a lot of snow all the time. So it's been a rough winter. Yeah, this year. <laughs> and just so you're clear, I mean, that's me, this is a change to what we currently have. Okay. So that you're aware of that. Yes. Because yeah, right now there's not a limit. No, I don't think there's a 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. No, that I think is there. I just meant it's two hours from 
5 a.m. till at 3 a.m. Well, and then there was a 3 to 5. It's 3 to 6 right now, I think. And that's what Loghouse had okay. said that, you know, they have farmers that come in at 5 a.m. And so I took that into consideration. I took what Jill said into consideration. Um, most of our businesses downtown, other than the three establishments, close at like 5 o'clock. And so that was just a consideration. Now, you are more than willing, or you're more than welcome to look it over, then decide what you want to do. It was just a recommendation. We had we kind of tabled this for months <coughs> and months, so. I'm, I'm fine with it. First, of, my only question was Jamie's input as to if he had enough window built in there. It takes in all the considerations that the two business owners that had problems with the last one. It does do that. So I'm okay with that. And if we do decide to pass this, I'll just, uh, I was the liaison the police department, I would say, you know, hey, we pass this, start enforcing the parking again, and this is the new ordinance. And I can do that easy enough. And you're concerned about tickets and stuff will be handled because it is an issue getting people to use, get right. back out of there. I mean, it is. I hate to give anybody a ticket unnecessarily but if you don't follow the rules i mean well they've got a bigger parking lot now they've yes got more space to park so there's, there's more parking no, up there now there's than no there reason that they should be parking along the, the street especially at those time frames okay mm -hmm. but the next part of that is is they are parking all the way around the new park up here whether it be the back side or on the street even and that's something that um jamie doug and i were talking about like at the new police station um, if you're going to have driveways pulling out there, right now they're allowed to park along Walnut and it's very hard to see around those vehicles. So this only takes care of the downtown parking. I would say that we need to address parking on the back side <coughs> of the park, you know, in those two spaces, you know. Um, you also would need to address the parking in front of Log House. Um, yeah, on both sides of Walnut, there, it's a state highway. They're not supposed to park, uh, you know, it's, along there. That's my question too. I mean, we're we're making all this stuff. Is there anything with the state? I mean, these are state <coughs> roads. They're not ours. So, yeah. do we need to get with them to find out? So maybe we do, do need to table this. Well, thing. the last time we talked to Indot, they didn't they tell us that the downtown was okay to restrict, but they signed off on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was involved in but, the first one. They didn't have a problem with that first one. They said it's no different than other towns do. Right. But, you know, I do think that if we're going to do Walnut, we need to talk to them about restricting parking along there. Um, but then again, that like the party pack is going to have a party or er, problem with that. Um, That's why there's a 10-minute sign. Because there's a 10-minute sign in front of theirs. We did this once. So I don't know that... We wrote a ticket there and got... Right. Know, so, I, I mean, we do have other parking issues. This was just to kind of temporarily... When we opened the parking back up, it became a problem again. Right. Because according to our ordinance, they should be writing tickets every two hours for any cars that are parked up there all the way up until 3 a.m. So, on Michigan. Michigan. No, it's on the 6 p.m. It was. 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. No, on the other. Oh, on, on the, the old, on, on the old on, one. On the one that we just, we passed it like a year ago or something. So, yeah, probably two, or years, two years ago. Years. So, but I'm just telling you that replacing all these signs is expensive. I, I want to bring that up. So, if you need time to think about this, let's. I'd make a motion we table it yes. until we discuss this further. I was okay with passing on the first reading and then have them look, ask the state what you're and then we we'll get back we can pass on the second and third. That's I'm my gonna, thoughts. So. I'm in agreement with Ed until we find out more specifics in because I don't want to mess with this again. I want right. it done and over with, so we need to make things more specific. Suit me. We got a motion, didn't you? Yes, yeah. I will second that. So we have a motion and a, and a second to table the uh, downtown parking <coughs> Number twenty-one. Yes. Number 
Any further comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any other new business? I have <laughs> <laughs> one thing I would like to bring up. We've had um, several discussions regarding the time clock and the time clock software. And I think um, on the moving forward, I think we need to do away with our current time clock system and come up with a different time clock system. However, obviously until that one is put into place, I think we need to, to leave the one we have currently. But um, I think that we as the council need to, I know you're upset, Lisa, about these issues. So um, I, I would move that we go ahead and do away with the current time, time clock system and research and implement a new one. All right. Uh, I've got a question. Lisa, what are your thoughts on this? Well, hold on now. That, that's why I'm asking. I want to know now before we get knee deep into it. I was, uh, I was disappointed with the software, but everybody seems to love it now. I mean, Jamie likes it. I don't love it. Well, but... and, you know, the guys are getting used to it. I got some pushback from Corey on getting rid of it because his guys like it. But then I, I will tell you there was a time I was not happy with the software. It was not right. doing what it said it was going to and it doesn't but if we're just gonna go back to paper timesheets, then that's I I mean we Right now we're doing redundancy because we, we're doing paper timesheets and we're doing this time clock software and there has been problems. It's been a lot better in the two weeks or the two pay periods that I've been trying to learn payroll and, and getting into it. It's starting to get a little bit better. The uh, supervisors seem to be honing in on it, but it took me that one week about six hours to fix all the differences between the paper time sheets and what was in the system. Okay, is the system, is there something going on with it that it's gotten better? Have they upgraded it? No. Okay, so. The, it's just being, like I said, the supervisors have now started taking a look at what they're um, putting in rather than, you know, just handing you know, kind of glancing over it, signing the timesheet, and then handing it off to us, and then we're fixing it all. I gave you guys the report. You asked for the report. You saw what was happening. Um, you asked for the report. I didn't voluntarily give it to you, but um, you wanted to know how many times supervisors were punching people in and out, and how many times they were changing schedules, or, you know, adjusting for this or that, you know. So I gave you the report that I had. You looked it over, you know. I was not happy with it for a lot of, but I don't know if getting rid of this time clock software is the answer or making people more responsible, but we also didn't like that idea. You know, if we make people more responsible and you know, the first time they all, you know, in our handbook, it literally states that if you, um, turn in a wrong timesheet, it's a fireable offense. So, you, I mean, how drastic do you want to get? <clears throat> so, it, it really, right now, what you, what you have, and it may get better, I don't know, you've got a glorified PTO system. <laughs> now, out of the, the three department heads, and I am not slamming anybody, Jamie probably does the best because he daily checks it. But we have one department that is over here two to four hours in a pay period trying to get their time figured out. They just can't. Uh, and some of that comes from full-time people come in other than their scheduled work. They go, I'll use a fireman. They can't clock in. So it's hard to probably keep track of that. And like you said, there's a lot of redundancy. I mean, we're, they're having to do paper time sheets and they're having to do their clock in stuff and it just, that's where, that's where I, I have the big concern. We're, we're spending hours 
doing something that we put in a system to make it easier. But we're still doing what we were doing before we put in the easier system. Right? Right. So I mean, and I don't know, I'll use this example, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. If you went back to the old punch thing, you're still going to have issues. Uh, like over there, the fire, even the police it might be. Well, you may even have it here. If they come back at, they're out working, and they come back at 4.30, and Joseph's the last one here and goes to leave, he'll forget to punch out. And then you, we're going to be the same thing we're doing now. And I, so I have those issues still, I, but I get on about every day and just go through it for a couple minutes and, and make sure everything's right. And then, from, from what, and obviously Jamie's department isn't a 24 hour department, from one of the, the things that I understand, there's, it has big issues with the 24 hour shifts. There's a lot of redundant, a lot of. And there's some things, things we're still have because we talked tonight. It is, it is not very friendly with the 24 hour shifts. He was having issues, they would punch in in the morning, what showed they worked a 24 hour shifts because it didn't log the night before. And that's, I don't know if that's an everyday on theirs. I'm going to tell you that most of the problems that this software has is human. It's probably all. It's all the human. It's, you know, that we have it set up so that it'll take on the 24-hour shift. But if somebody forgets to punch in or forgets to punch out, you have to go in and alter that time. And that's when it starts getting, you know. But if you've got one department that's coming in here spending four hours a week trying to get their time sheets for it. I mean, I, I think it's... I... And I, I felt that exact same way because it was I was using myself and Candy. So I would have Candy look at the time sheets. I'd have myself look at the time sheets just to try to get it figured out. Sometimes we had to drag Lori into it. And I'm thinking, how many man hours on just figuring out time sheets? You know, but the past... Two times have been better. But you're you still know, using the paper still, time sheets. We are still yeah. using the paper time sheets because people tend to write down things on the paper that they forget to put into the system. Well, and I like it for overtime because I have the guys write description of why they had overtime on that day. And I don't know if there's a place to do that on, on the other software. So... I mean, if we don't turn them back, both in, the, the supervisors can have both, and we only do the... But I will tell you, when we were using just paper time sheets, I have a couple of departments that fill them out like they were kindergartners with crayons. So, you know, it... Well, then, then was, that's where you don't use the shotgun approach. You, you know, know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was, it you know... Well, what if we would forget the time sheets and the software and just go to a mechanical punch clock? Then, okay, but we'd, we'd have to have more than one. So, so in that scenario, let's say Joseph is, you know, um, he comes in. I'm just picking on Joseph because I used his name, but um, let's say he comes in and um, he he's talking or something. He's like, oh, I forgot to punch out. Now Jamie has to go in and. He has to cross that off on his time card and, you know, right on the right time and initial well, it, I, and, you know. I get that, it's but the that's same Jamie's, thing. that's kind of his job, though, as administrator and supervisor. Right. And if that's an ongoing thing, then you need to have that discussion with your employee, Jamie, that this is a habit, and habits like this aren't acceptable. I mean, it's anywhere else I've ever worked, if, if you forget to punch in or punch out, Get away with that one or two times, but then it's like you're looking at some disciplinary actions. I don't have a problem with it. So, no. so then, it works for me. So I, would, I guess what I would say, since she, I don't do payroll. I'm not in there, so I'm not. But I hear complaints what it was. But now Lisa, as she said, is doing it. So my suggestion would be at least to go one more cycle or two more cycles and see if that awesome. continues to get better. And maybe with well, her dealing with it, we have a contract with this software. Right? Yes, and you do pay for it. Right. I mean, right. paper time sheets are cheaper, right. honestly. But that's not, you know, a reason. But, but it sounds like it's cheaper all the way around. I mean, you know, all yeah. the people putting the man hours in trying to figure out this wonderful system. And the thing <laughs> is, is, I'm sorry, make the employees accountable. They are not perfect. And it's not our place to cover their butts every time we drive. 
I think I kind of agree with Erica a little bit on that stance, and I'm not begrudging any of them, but, you know, I, I worked in a factory years ago, and you know, we'd get there, and we stood, we weren't allowed to clock in until a certain time, and you clocked in. If you weren't clocked in, you were there. When you go to lunch, you went it clocked out first before you did anything else, and you clocked back in, and if you were one minute late, you got docked half an hour. Is that strict? And you clocked out at night, or you, you got a trip to the office to freaking explain why you didn't clock out? If you go back to just the paper sheet so people can write whatever they want, you sure. know what I mean? And, well, that's what I said. Know, I, so, I mean, it's one way or another. You know, I, I like it for, I'm starting to like it for the PTO part of it because the guys don't come in and go, hey, how many PTO hours do I have, you know? Stuff like that, they have it right there on their phones. If they want to look it up, they can. The thing is, uh, you know, it's, we've, it's, we've had this system for a while. Right. It took a long time for people to get used to it to realize how it works. We've had it long enough. They need to know that they're accountable. If you don't punch in, you're not going to get paid. Yes. It's not always Jamie's place to fix it, or Corey's place to fix it, or Lisa's place to fix it. People need to be responsible. They are grown adults. Enough is enough. <clears throat> Anything else, guys? No. Well, I, 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 I kind of, I'm kind of in a lull right now because I'm weighing everything that Lisa presented, and and it, I totally agree with Erica. I think there's a level of. responsibility that is lacking in that aspect and I totally agree with Erica on what she said um, you know that's the way ours is. we got the same kind of system it's different we use velocity but it works great we love it I mean but you times, freaking clock in and you clock out but how many times do you fix it I don't fix it hardly ever on my two guys but Larry has to fix it once or twice a week and that's solely because um, he fixes it because he got, excuse me, an employee got sent on delivery, and from that delivery, was told to clock out. Well, if you aren't within our geo fence, you don't get credit for those hours because you clocked out out of the geo fence. Larry goes in to fix that, saying <coughs> I issued him, and, and there's a place in there he types in, I issued him to go home from there because he was a mile from his house and it's 10 o'clock at night. Right. You know, those are the instances that he fixes. And see, we were supposed to have a geofence. <coughs> the problem well, was, whatever happened to that. The problem was is that the geofence in this town covers all the way up to the downtown square and then further. I mean, it, it's not tight we enough. couldn't get it. You have a geofence still, it's just not as tight as you wanted it. Well, when I, when I, this is why I got so mad at the software, because when I brought it to you, they told me that I could make that geofence within six feet of anywhere. You just said they did. And then when I bought the software and I put it into effect and everything, everybody, um, we found out that that was not the case. And then the salesman was like, well, I don't know who told you that. Well, I wouldn't have bought it. If I, you know, that was the one thing that we were looking for was the geofence. And then it just started going downhill from there. You know, I get it. These guys haven't ever had to punch in, most of them. And it is a hard system to, it's it's a hard habit to get into. But. Well, I'll attest to that. When you know, we changed, we changed from paper cards. And we have, we have so two I, departments. I know we have things. two departments that. You know, it's hard for them to punch in when, you know, if they get an ambulance call, they're not going to stop everything to make sure that they they punch in and then get in the ambulance and go, you know. So then Mark has to adjust their time or, you know, whoever to say that they were here. Um, but I will tell you, yes, there was a time, but I think in talking with the supervisors and stuff, they are working on getting that tightened down. now. If you want to look into other software, uh, other time clock software or something, I mean, I've already got money invested in this that I 
am not happy with because of the fact that it didn't do what it wanted. I, you know, and but back to my question about the contract. Is it a? Are we stuck with it for a period of time? No, it's okay. a quarter to quarter. I think you know contract. I'd have to pull it, but. Your user license is that a yearly user license? It might be, but I mean we only pay it by the quarter, so. Um, I'd have I, to I get bet it. it's a yearly license, though. I'd have to get it to Derek to look at before you know whatever the contract was. So, but I'm just going to tell you, unless you have a better system, I wouldn't get rid of. I mean, no, that's that was my motion. You, yeah, that yeah. was my motion. And if you, if you, you want to look at something else, until we get a different one, then, but yeah, I mean that was right. my motion, not to just totally do away with everything, but to get rid of right. that. The one we have. I'll second that. Research. So we have a motion and a second to look into a new time cock uh, solution and uh, keep the current one that we have till we can find something that's uh, a better system. Any further comments on this? Yes. Um, Hearing the discussion tonight, and I'm going to place this to the council as much as anybody. You know, there's different systems, of course. You know, there's there's punch clocks. There's you know things that have security. You got to use your finger. You know, at what level? What are we? Are we interested in maybe looking at another software type program? Even well, I, think I, I guess that's my question is, is what is our parameters of my intent would be to whoever's doing payroll, if that's you or, or whatever, and even your department heads, you guys look at something that's going to be user friendly, we can do away with the paper sheets, and something that we don't have to spend hours every pay period trying to figure out. Something, I mean, different than what you have. The, the, it, may, it may be the same type of system that you have, but a system that does things totally different, where you don't have to do what you're doing now. So I mean, I guess I throw that back to the whoever's doing payroll to, to you know, Fair do enough. some research and then bring that back to us. But I, the one we've got now, I don't think is working. Well, no, we were sold. I agree. We were sold to build goods on that. They did not hold their. Um, and that's of no fault of yours. No. I mean, it's, it's, well, they, but they sold it to you. I mean, I'm the one that spent all the money on it, and so it does make me feel but like I wasted under, money. I think, no, I mean, but you asked the town council. Now. Council approved it. You just did wrong. No, I on. get it, but um, one of the major one of the major decisions was is that the current one has the ability to talk to the tower software, the, yes. the bookkeeping. That was the thing where the others did not. Now, with that being said, if we would find something that is better than we have now, I'm not opposed to paying for some software guru to come in here and write a user interface to move stuff from that one to our book. I mean, we would be money ahead than paying the People sit around four hours a day and adjust timesheets just but to pay again, for a user interface and transfer that data. Is this okay? a software issue or a human issue? Well, it's, I think it's both. <laughs> I, think, I think it probably is both. It's, 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 but that's so, what I'm saying. But I mean, just by getting a different time clock, I don't think it's going to solve everything. There are other things that have to be addressed that will right. go with the new software or the new time clock. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> That is my intent. That ends my discussion. I mean, I, I just was, I appreciate the input there. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we're going to look into some kind of system. I would ask Lisa to, and I know she's already busy, but to take a look at things and we'll have a workshop maybe in a month or so and she can you know give her some time to look at some stuff and maybe if we spare time we have some time to look at some stuff and you know we can all maybe sit down and when we have time and compare notes of you know what we think we're looking ahead and, and you know just I think it's a bigger conversation and a bigger it's a big deal we have so many different departments and the way they operate are so much different from each other. I mean, there's no one system that's going to be perfect. Well, I know. For all of them. I mean, we have to try to sort that out. 
Any other new business? I have a couple things. Um, I was asked by some citizens to bring this up. Do we have plans on making or, or creating a, a farmer's market? We have, um, Jill Guyan has, has actually put something out about if anybody would, you know, that we're kind of looking for somebody to do something in the downtown square, maybe one, but we need somebody to run it. So, um, and somebody that knows people that they can draw in for that kind of a thing, so. I think Plymouth has theirs on Saturday mornings, don't they? Yeah. 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 In, 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 I, think I know Rochester Auburn does too on Saturday morning in front of the courthouse. Urban has theirs. Yeah. We wouldn't want to do it on the same day necessarily as all of them. Well, I don't know. I, I think it would be fine. Do it. Right. No, no, I get it. But you it's, have to just find somebody to run it. Yeah. And people like to hop from town to town. And yep. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Else's and, stuff, and, so. and we've got some of our local Amish that won't travel 15 miles, you know, right. to the next town. So they'll, yeah. they'll come here. Um, do we know who we would talk to about that? To find somebody that would lead that? Who's responsible for Are that? Are you taking that on? If I have to, but... If you, just, if you want to run a farmer's market, I guess that would be... But I don't... <laughs> I'm, I'm asking because I, I have no idea, but I'm, I'll, be step, I'll step in this thing. Nobody wants to just... Nobody wants to take it and run with it, you know, so that... I don't know enough farmers to get a bunch together yeah, to, you know. What about, yes. those, what about some of those citizens that brought that to you? What well, you exactly. Know? That's where I'll go back to, is yeah. to talk with those three other people, the citizens that talk yeah. to me, and I'll go back to, what's your ideas here? Because I don't have any. I just know yeah. that... that it would be fabulous to have one. It's just we need right. somebody that is, like, in charge, a point person that... You know, they're the ones that are going to, like with TGIF, and, and Randy will tell you how much work that is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you need somebody that's going to, you know, consult with the farmers and set up the booth spaces and stuff like that, you know, and somebody that's going to organize it, make sure that these people have insurance in case they, you know, yeah. um, you know, they put something out and somebody trips over it, you want to make sure they have insurance, you know, not just the town being responsible. The town will always be responsible on the back end, but <coughs> if you have it on our property. Sort of like the parks and stuff like that, right. but if you want to get somebody to... Gary, I would suggest you maybe find an attorney that's a farmer that could help you out too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Derek. <laughs> But you can, you can contact Leonard and, and see how they yeah, can yeah, 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 exactly how they do it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Definitely have to ask it around. I think... Uh, Find out how it's done. Tom Kemp still goes there. Fred, you're going to have to call Fred. Tom Kemp, you're going to have to call Fred. He would give you that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we need. Oh, yeah. We've got the property. I'll go around person checking. Yeah. 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 The second thing that I have is more towards, I guess, maybe Mark. Um, even more people have expressed to me interest in trying to get a grocery store in town. Is there anything we can do to help town council-wise as far as alleviating costs for somebody to try to move into a building? Um, yes and somebody no. you could talk to at the county to help funnel yeah. somebody who's looking to start a grocery store? I'll tell you, I had the same question sitting in your seat in 2012. The last 10 years ago, yep. 13 years ago. There's not, I mean, we can't go and put one in, obviously. <laughs> it's just, uh, I, I look it's around all these, I know countless small towns that are way smaller than this and have a bustling grocery store. And there are many that don't. <laughs> well, it's just, uh, I, I know what you're saying, it takes that person that can do it. Yeah. I, but, I mean, is there anything we could do to, to help bring that business here? Could you maybe look into that? I can look into anything, but it's finding yeah. what. And there's things like, you know, there's tax evasion. There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's things, things we can do. A sense. lot of there's you know, private You gotta have somebody that wants to come to the yeah, town right. and can justify that they'll have enough yeah, business to keep afloat. It really, yeah. it's gotta be a private developer that wants to do it. Yeah. And then the town can provide some level of assistance with abatements and things like that, like you do with a sequel wire. But first step is you gotta find somebody that's willing to do that. Right. The second step is to get the people in this town to shop there. 
Well, yeah, but that's, so that's what the people from that came to me though that wanted. So okay. right. and they say that. They're and then they say yeah. And then they go somewhere else. Hey, gosh, a little bit right there. There's there's been more than this Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, there were two grocery stores in this town. But they couldn't make it. One uptown and one out here. Yeah. yeah. And then when they built the big superstores in Plymouth, that pretty much killed them. First one went out was the one downtown, and the second one was parking shop. Yeah. Um, could you at least ask out, though? Um, throw some feelers out, see if anybody's receptive oh, and, out there. I mean, we've worked on, I've looked into it many times. Okay. Um, I talked to the economic development coordinator at IMPA because there was another community that did end up getting one, and it was the same type of thing. They had the interest, somebody they assisted. I, I mean, there's all sorts of ways I can find you that we could assist up to a degree, Yeah. but it's getting that, I mean, that person has to assume some type of level investment because I also don't know that it's 100% right that we take all of those <laughs> risk. <laughs> right, no. Yeah. Um, all right, I, I just but, wanted to throw it out to see. Yep. Like I said, I've been asked. Oh, so you're good. Argus, I, Argus Utilities. I, and that's one of those things you hope in that, that circle of life, that growth that is, as this grows up, that this over here, they'll come eventually. Yeah. I, and the bad thing is it will be tomorrow, but hopefully. Uh, yeah. Dollar Bill, just build good. another store. They <laughs> 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 one on the north side to get it all. Yeah, yeah, I share sure green. I wish we did. Yeah, or yeah, we were doing, but Ooh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. and we'll work on that. Maybe something we can keep talking about. Trying to all right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. No. All I've got. He's talking about. All right. Let's go to claims. This is claims uh, from. Well, 214 to 228. Yes. Or 227, actually. So um, the claims for this month are from the February 14th till February the 27th. Again, our, our meeting fell on the first day of the month. So you have low claims again, Randy. You should I be see happy. That. I'm happy. So <laughs> that thing is real thin. I know. So it's $101,313.40. Cents. Make a motion to approve the claims from 21423 to 227 23 yeah. of $101,313.48. I'll second. We have a motion. I had a second to accept claims from 21423 to 227 23 for the amount of $101,313.48. Any further comments? Mm -hmm. Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Claims have passed. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.